Good evening, Zimbabwe, and welcome to yet another exciting edition of Beyond Tomorrow. I'm Takuchi Mbakwe. Continuing from where we left off last week, where we were talking about waste management in Zimbabwe, and in particular, Harare, we are here at the Environmental Management Agency, where we are being joined by Ankela Sidangi, who's going to be telling us what Emma is doing to tackle waste management, which has been already uh, stated by the president that it is a state of national disaster. I'm Keller. Thank you for allowing us to come into your space today to talk about this it's a very sad scenario that's unfolding in, in the capital. We very much welcome you to mm -hmm. our space, uh, feel at home, mm -hmm. um, because we know when you are here, everything uh, comes out, especially when we unpack issues of environmental management mm -hmm. to the people, especially now that you're talking about the seed scenario that we are having before us. Um, I think it should really not be a sad scenario because um, it's, a, it's, a, it's that point in time where we need to right all the wrongs mm -hmm. and ensure that uh, the safety of the public as well as the integrity of the environment uh, both are not at risk. So you are very much welcome. Great. Let's get into it. A couple of weeks, now months, mm -hmm. we saw the Environmental Management Agency coming in after council mm -hmm. had been declared incapacitated to handle waste management. Mm -hmm. City of Harare officials are on record stating that the rate at which waste was being produced mm -hmm. and the rate at which they could collect it, mm -hmm. there was a huge mismatch there. Mm -hmm. You've been going around trying to clear out dump sites and yet we are seeing again those hills of waste, those mounds are again appearing mm -hmm. in Harare. What's really going on? Um, we have a situation really like I did point out, it's that point in time where we need to right the wrongs, mm. uh, but we are righting the wrongs from a very objective point of view because um, we, it has been realized that um, because of poor waste management, uh, especially in the province of Harare, uh, the safety of the people is really at risk, especially public health. Mm. Uh, without even talking about the environment itself because it was uh, overwhelmed. So what I can say briefly is that um, that declaration um, was, um, it was high time. We had such a, a, a robust kind of approach uh, to putting things right. Um, I think what we need to understand is uh, issues of waste management are all an individual choice uh, because um, the waste that we generate belongs to me and you. There is no waste that is probably coming from the jungle, but it's coming from a human space, meaning that it has to be corrected by us as humans. Mm -hmm. And it starts with our mindset, having the proper, um, proper mindset um, and exhibiting the appropriate behavior. Because if we look at the status of waste in the country, um, in 2011, we actually came up with an integrated solid waste management plan mm. that laid out uh, the status of waste in the country, looking at uh, that on an annual basis. We generate about 1.6 to 1.7 million tons of waste. Wow. The beauty about all this waste is that 90% um, of it is either recyclable, reusable, or compostable, mm. meaning that at the end of the day, we just have 10% that should go to the landfill not what we are seeing whereby almost the 100 percent is now in the environment mm. so um, as a country we are quite fortunate we have an, an opportunity in the waste that we generate like i've just pointed out 90 percent of it can be taken back into the economy so when the state of disaster was declared in harare it was a way of saying um can we wake up and smell the coffee things are not all right mm -hmm. in as far as waste management is concerned because it was managed in a poor way. So um, the, the government then um, actually gave Emma that oversight rule of coordinating in the removal of illegal waste dump. Uh, that is one thing that people need to understand because mm. we've had questions where we have been... Why is Emma intervening? Yes, where we have been told that uh, we have taken over waste management in Harare. We have mm. not taken over waste management in Harare. We are coordinating the removal of the illegal waste dumps, among other uh, remedial action action items that we actually uh, suggested or proposed uh, through SI 140 of 2023. Mm -hmm. So, so far so good. Uh, we have been taking baby steps. There have been hiccups here and there, 
but I think um, the thrust that was taken, especially of saying the local authorities should be there as well, uh, such that when this comes to an end, they are able to continue. We need that continuity mm -hmm. in the system. Alas, let me, let me just come in. Yes, you are to, you are telling us about this very uh, solid foundation of how we got to where we are. Mm -hmm. But I want to throw it back to you. You mentioned baby steps and hiccups along the way. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the hiccups mm -hmm. from your perspective as Emma? Mm -hmm. Because when you go into the streets of Harare now, mm -hmm. we're not seeing a major difference. Go mm -hmm. to places like your charge office there, you're seeing the mounds. Because yeah. every other time I remember the news team came mm -hmm. through and you were removing the waste mm -hmm. there, and it looked very clean. Mm -hmm. But every day now, you go there, you see the dirt again. Yes, that's the alas that I was just going to, uh, about to touch mm. on in, the, in that um, in as much as we're coordinating the removal of the waste dumps and we're doing so well. But it will appear that in as much as we're taking steps, 10 steps forward, I will take about 20 steps backward mm. in the sense that after a dump is cleared, uh, with the assumption that the local authority will now um, assume that um, continuous collection of waste that was not happening. So what ended up, up, I mean, what happened now was that the residents, because they were not seeing the collection mm -hmm. as they, it, it had been uh, promised, they began again to dump the waste. That's why we now had the reaccumulation of what? Yes. Of the illegal dumps. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we had a target of dumps that we wanted to clear. But soon it became a moving target in the sense that as soon as the clearing was done, then dumping also would okay. So as a way we are saying, we didn't see the local authorities really coming to play ball mm. because that was necessary. Yeah, you're not the local authority. I'm just going to put you on the spot for a bit right. there because the local authority had already admitted mm -hmm. to say uh, we are incapacitated. We need more uh, refuge trucks to remove uh, the waste mm -hmm. and all the other nitty gritties that are associated with our Mm -hmm. various local authorities mm -hmm. meeting in Chitunguiza in Harare. You know the scenario there. So wasn't it a bit uh, naive to think that they would actually come through and collect the waste there? Yeah, but I, I, I want to assume that um, local authorities, um, um, they, re they remain the mm -hmm. custodians of the residents and uh, they have to continuously look after the residents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, that was a d dangerous declaration to really say we are incapacitated. Mm -hmm. Because um, for a local authority, uh, who all of us we look up, up to. And we are paying our rates. Exactly. Yeah. And then we have a situation whereby you declare that you are incapacitated. I think it really mm -hmm. on its own uh, is not in, in sync with how things should be. Yeah. Because if as the father of the home, you declare you are incapacitated. Mm -hmm. What do you want the children to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in a way, um, as the, uh, this is the environmental management agency, because we are a regulatory uh, body, uh, we just need to point out that um, local authorities, they just have to come back to line and mm -hmm. play ball, because uh, we, who, who do they expect to Chicken. take over yeah. from them? Yeah. So each one of us, we need to play uh, or rather our role, be yeah. responsible for what we are mandated to mm. do rather than to declare incapacitation. Imagine if it is the environmental management agency, we do the same. What kind of a situation are we going to have? Interesting. Let's move away from Marari for a bit because we know that there is a lot of mm. you know, things at play mm -hmm. in that space. Mm. How is the situation mm -hmm. in the other cities mm -hmm. and the other rural district councils here? Um, we have uh, different um, performances across the country. It's not really uniform. And uh, just to give hope to, to the nation, mm -hmm. um, what we see in Harare is not what we see probably in Blawayo mm -hmm. or probably in Mtare. Uh, I'll give you just uh, probably a snippet on how we have seen um, the National Cleanup Program turning the fortunes of mm -hmm. certain local authorities one that quickly come to mind is um, Mutare. Uh, you look even at, I mean, look at Blawayo. Those are the big cities of this country. Look at Masringo. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are quite clean. They are quite clean, which really brings us to a situation or to a point whereby we are saying, if A did it, 
why can't we mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. so there are a lot of lessons that we need to learn from each other like i'll give you an example of the city of blawayo mm -hmm. they've designed i mean devised this a, 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 a rather a, a, an approach whereby they are saying uh, maybe because they cannot like move around all the, the residential areas and the communities now they've opened a leeway for communities to come through uh, uh, in the management of waste in that city and uh, you find they have a community based waste management it's a collection system rather wow. whereby you find community members uh, they've come out offered trucks uh, whereby now what they do is as communities they go to a central point they leave their waste there these community trucks, they take the, the, the waste from there, mm. they take it to another central collection point, whereby now the local authority refuse truck will just do it around and collect mm. all the waste. So that's why if you go to most uh, residential areas in Blawayo, they are fairly clean. Yeah. It's because of that approach. So that's why I'm saying in as much as we are different, um, as uh, cities, as um, towns, there is a lot that we can learn from each mm. other and they build each other up. Wow. Well, on that positive note, that's why I like this show. When you meet up with people and you discuss these mm -hmm. issues, there are always solutions to these problems. Mm -hmm. When we do come back, we're going to look at how we can turn those millions and millions of tons of waste being generated in the city into something amazing. And we're going to hear some amazing testimonials mm -hmm. from Amkela. Don't touch that dial. This is Beyond Tomorrow. Welcome back to the second segment of Beyond Tomorrow. To, tonight, we are talking to Amkila Sidanke from the Environmental Management Agency. I don't know where you were if you missed the first session. We're talking about how waste management in Harare is going on since the, sta the president stated that it is now a state of national disaster. Now, to the issue of waste to recyclable. You're talking about a circular economy. Where are we? You're talking about millions and millions of tons being generated. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk to people in the recycling sector, they're really excited when they mm -hmm. see this waste. Mm -hmm. Let's start and say, where are they? Mm -hmm. Are they also failing to collect this waste? Because I'm thinking if someone knows there's money in the waste, mm -hmm. why can't they just go and pick off the waste at charge office, for instance? Right. Um, I think, uh, referring back to the plan that I talked about um, mm. earlier, you realize that um, it actually um, stressed on the issue of waste minimization. Mm. Uh, waste minimization coming from the opportunities that I find in the waste that we generate. Uh, the fact that 90% uh, of it is recyclable, usable or compostable. So, in a way, we are saying we don't have waste in Zimbabwe. Mm. It's only 10% that is waste. Yeah. Rather, otherwise, 90% is a resource. Because we are saying all along, um, we have been using the linear model, mm -hmm. whereby it's about generating waste, collecting it, and uh, disposing it. And it's not working. That's why our 90% is in the environment. Mm. It's coming from that misinformed and outdated uh, model Approach. to ES. So we are saying to circumvert that, Let's go for the, for the circular model, okay. whereby we are saying nothing should escape from the system. Mm. As soon as we have this going into the economy, it should remain there. So our waste, like I have pointed out, it's, it's a resource. It's just another gold that we are sitting on. Mm. What we only need to understand is to change our mindset and they really understand and agree that here we are, we have got a resource in our waste. It's not waste until you waste it. So what we are saying now is how do we start on it? Um, the basic, or rather the game changer, is being able to separate the waste. Because if you go outside now and see all those illegal dumps, it's all mixed. Plastic, glass, yes, paper. Yes, and now to imagine Mr. Tauko going to try and recover a recyclable there, it's all dirty. Mm -hmm. So that's why people just, you know, look down and actually look at it as something that is, that is, already wasted and cannot be taken back. Mm -hmm. But we are saying, if we go at household level, 
I want to talk to people at household level now. Yeah. Just let's say, just use the two bin system. It's very simple to have a two bin system. You have a green bag, you have a black bag. The green bag will put all the dry waste. Mm -hmm. And then the black bag, that's where you can put what is biodegradable, your sadzas and your kitchen leftovers, you put them in the black bag. And eventually knowing, again, you're not going to throw that away. You are going to put in your garden and try and, and compost. Then you Wait, just hold on. For areas like Kudu Ghetto, yes. we represent the, the yes. ghetto massive. Yes. Let's, let's take it practically. Mm -hmm. If you're in Chitungwiza, mm -hmm. for starters, mm -hmm. there's only one refuse truck that's going to come mm -hmm. on a Wednesday or whatever day. Mm -hmm. And if I separate mm -hmm. my waste and I say I'm putting the solid mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. other waste, the mm -hmm. green and mm -hmm. black bag. Panoya Mota Yamara, you know, those is very and one who can't have a woman. No, we need to have uh, mm. an informed yes. landscape. Yeah. We need to be in sync with what is happening. It's not an issue of Tapu having the green bag and the black bag mm -hmm. at home and the local authority is not able to also fit Separate, into that yeah. um, a jigsaw puzzle. We need a situation whereby even the local authority is the one initiating that. Mm -hmm. So we are saying it's as easy as ABC. When you have your sadzas, there is no need for a refuse type. Mm -hmm. You take that, you tip it into your garden, then you have a, a, you know, a compost. composting. And then the, 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 the recyclables, they are waste takers. I think from the database that we have currently, we have about plus or minus 72 players across the recycling value chain. Mm -hmm. They are there to take up the waste, not just to take it for free, but on yeah. a mat monetary basis. Okay. So that is a win-win situation. It's quite a quick win that we can exhaust. That's why I said there is a very big, uh, mm -hmm. or rather we've got more opportunities in the West that we generate mm -hmm. as a country that can actually take us for some way. But I think the only problem that we are having is our mindset. Yeah. If only we can be able to change our mindset, then we won't be having all these problems. I'll give you an example. At my own a home, we do that separation. It's not really very difficult. It doesn't take much to make that difference. Mm -hmm. Just putting your trowel on the waste on the other side and your, 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 I mean, your biodegradable waste on the, on the other side. Like you saw here at Emma, we are setting the pace, trying to be exemplary. So we have a central collection point or drop-off point. I just bring my material. I no longer call it waste because it's now material as a resource. Mm -hmm. I bring it to drop-off point and then, then we invite all those that are in the recycling value chain to come and collect for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <sighs> Separation of that yada yada. Yes. Let's come back to the circular economy right. visa versus the linear model. Right. How are we doing there? Yes, we've spoken and mm -hmm. said, look, mm -hmm. when you look at the dumps, mm -hmm. there's a mixture mm -hmm. of the waste. Mm -hmm. But how are those players mm -hmm. in that space mm -hmm. are coming up? And given a year or two, will they be able to actually give us a positive impact in terms of removing the waste? Um, I think, uh, like I did point out, it's not really an issue of going individual mm -hmm. this approach. It needs all of us having a common understanding from the local authorities, the residents, and whoever is it, be it a regulatory authority, all having the same mindset and same uh, thrust. Uh, that is to say, uh, for instance, I'm talking about the plus or minus 72 that we have in our database. And they just imagine they are able to remove from the environment currently plus or minus 20,000 tons per month. So imagine if we are to grow that kind of um, arrangement, have more and more players coming on board. Just look at how much tonnage we can remove from mm -hmm. the environment. Mm -hmm. Like I did point out, all these illegal dumps that are all around us, it's not waste at all. Mm -hmm. All that is there, there are resources that can be taken back into the circularity, that can actually um, build the circular economy. Mm -hmm. Remember the circular economy that we are talking about, it's not an issue that you are clamoring for as Zimbabwe, but it's yeah, a global, global issue. Yeah, it's a global trajectory. And uh, if you look at some countries, it's, it's paying dividends. Mm -hmm. Look at Kenya. I won't go into the first world. I'll take an African country. Yeah, yeah. Look at Kenya. Kenya is doing so well. Even the policies that they have, they are already a, st a, a step ahead mm -hmm. in trying to in, a, 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 ingrain or can I say entrench the secular economy in mm -hmm. their nation 
they already have policies that are acting as enablers, like the extended producer responsibility policy. Okay. For them, it's already there, meaning that the producers are able to follow on their waste wow. and taking back into the into the economy. So those are some of the things that uh, we need to, to wake up to and smell the coffee, mm -hmm. because um, we cannot remain um, as as isolated as Zimbabwe, but we need to be in sync with what is happening globally taking into cognizance that uh, 2024 we want to also declare or rather to have a legal binding instrument on reducing plastic pollution by removing all the plastic from the economy. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that are happening and uh, we are not really on the wrong footing. I think we are in the right footing. What we just need is for all of us to play board. We're going to talk about plastic in a bit. But I want us to talk about a culture change as right. we're talking just before we started the show. Right. We're talking about how if you go around mm -hmm. the streets mm -hmm. at this time in the evening, mm -hmm. four, five, six, you find vendors. Right. We understand that people need to earn a living, yeah. but the amount of waste they mm -hmm. produce. Mm -hmm. Because whilst city fathers, mm -hmm are supposed to be able to remove the waste. They do clean up. In the morning, you find those ladies and those mm -hmm. men cleaning up the streets of Harare. Come the evening time, you find an ebinzi, an madumasi, and the rotten stuff is left there, and they push some of it in the drains. Mm -hmm. yeah, How critical is it for people to change their cultures? Yeah. Look at, uh, on the other side, look at people who are driving with GLs, Gabi mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Is yeah. there a lack of enforcement? Let's start with the culture right. and then we, we come to the enforcement of right. it. Um, there they could be the issue of uh, the policies as well as the issue of uh, enforcement. Hmm. There's two, the sort of, it's a two way street. Hmm. With one thing having policy and another thing for enforcing it. So what we need to do is we need to, to bring these two ends uh, together. But over and above all, we need to have the rightful mindset of our people. Mm. Because it's not that the person who's throwing glitter out through a GD6, mm. does not know that it's illegal to do that. The mm. person knows very well. But it's just an issue that I need, as long as there's no one looking at me, I will throw away. Mm. But what we forget is that um, the environment um, will always remember mm. who violated wow. it. Yeah, we we'll always remember, even if at times we don't, it, if it doesn't set boundaries, when cholera strikes, it even strikes you mm. that has been trying to, to exhibit the best practices. But what we are saying is, we start off with the right mindset. So what we need to do is to drum a lot of, we have that massive awareness raising. Mm -hmm. Massive awareness raising, that is not secluded probably to say, Emma has to do it. Yes. But you find that even us as individuals, we become brothers keepers. By being brothers keepers, it doesn't mean just looking after your brother, it just, you know, mm -hmm. but even giving wise words or mm -hmm. knowledge to a brother, that is enough just mm -hmm. to say, please don't throw that paper. Please don't dump, don't do this, mm -hmm. don't do this. And they buy well. Don't use that liquid because what I've seen, we find ladies going out with small dishes mm -hmm. to throw the, 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 waste the waste out. Yes. What is the reason of doing that? Because at home there's no what? Yeah, there's no bin. Yeah. Yeah. So what we need to do, always let it go into to the bin, go, let it go to the rightful place and also let's be ready to actually caution each other, each other out. I mean, I mean, when you realize somebody's stepping out of line, try to bring that individual back. So there are a lot of things that we need to do before we talk about the law and the enforcement of it. And I remember Section 4 of the Environmental Management Act. Other than that, it gives you a right to a clean environment yes. that is not harmful to, to health. It also gives you a right to create that clean environment. Wow. So I'm just going to cut you off there. Yeah. When you come back after the break, we'll continue on the enforcement beat. But I liked how she put it there. The environment does not forget whether it's an issue of climate change, when you're cutting down the trees, when you're emitting those... Uh, greenhouse gases, the environment will never forget. It will come back to haunt us. Now we are grappling and struggling with the issues of cholera in Harare. And in my ghetto, Chitungu is high. We are listed as one of the hotspots. It's very sad. That means there is need 
for people to take action. When we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, plastics come 2024 as well as what the law says about punishing those who hurt the environment. Well, this is the third and final segment of this week's edition of Beyond Tomorrow. You've missed out on an amazing discussion of how the Environmental Management Agency is working with different stakeholders to try and bring out uh, waste in the city and in Zimbabwe as a whole. And did you know 90% of the waste generated in Zimbabwe is not necessarily waste. You can actually recycle it and use it to make different things such as tiles, bricks, you name it. you learn more if you keep it here on Beyond Tomorrow. I'm Killer. Tell us about the policies now. We talked about the culture shift, mm -hmm. but what does the law say? And are you refining these laws to make sure that those who are damaging the environment are put to book? Um, I think we are we are blessed as a country because mm. we have I think um, one of the I mean we are a country with the best policies. Mm. Um, without us going um, far away, let's just look at the Environmental Management Act, Chapter Twenty Point Two Seven. Mm -hmm. Other than the principles, the rights and principles that it gives, um, I would have loved to just share with you the principles uh, because of time, but it has got. Um, good principles that mm -hmm. really guide on environmental management and on the principles what i like about the uh, those principles most of them they were actually uh, brought into form after the rio summit of 1992 where we the sustainable development was really and um, emphasized yes emphasized so you find it really uh, captures the tenets of sustainable development so um, those principles, if really we are to follow them and the rights, follow them to the to the line, to the dot rather, mm -hmm. we won't have any problems. But I want also to say, other than the Parent Act, we also have the statutory instrument, like um, try, being there to try and make the act uh, enforceable and yeah. even picking it, I mean, rolling it out. So SI6 is one that is really trying to strengthen what is um, uh, enshrined in the current act and uh, that is a good start mm -hmm. yes we are reviewing the current act because there are loopholes that we have seen over time since 2002 today 20, 20 years later mm -hmm. so we are trying to, to review it such that it's in sync with the changing times but other than that recently following the national cleanup program that was declared in 2018 and having realized that um, um, not everyone was participating people which is, it was moral, it was out of moral situation that people were participating. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, we have realized so much within the five years since the declaration, we have seen so much that needs to be strengthened. How do we strengthen it? Let's have the cleanup now being compulsory. That is yeah. one thing that is coming out from that SI. Compulsory with participation across all the tiers of the, of the economy, mm -hmm. starting with the villages, all the 35,000 villages participating in the cleanup. Imagine what will happen to all the service centers. They'll yeah. be cleaned. Yeah. And also, what I like about this new SI that is proposed is that it's also trying to um, strengthen the secular economy that we are talking about. Okay. Because all along, in the, as a country, we've been talking about the secular economy, but you'll find that most of our statutes, they are not really a addressing that. So um, this uh, SI is actually trying to make it mandatory mm -hmm. for the separation of waste source, meaning okay. that at home it's now going to be mandatory to separate okay. that to be system that I talked about mm -hmm. at institution level. Having all the color coded the color coded beans yeah. in place and also separating it so we eat even um, at workplace even when we are having gatherings yes. we want to enforce them I mean, to try and impress on the separation of waste so that we don't have the mixed waste and at the end of the day if we do that then it will be easy to just to take out all the the, the 
the recyclables and uh, the Put compostables yeah. and uh, the reusables, and it's going back into the economy. So we have the best um, policies. policies. What is needed is for of us to join hands in the enforcement. Yes. And what I like about this SI is trying to encourage or cause for local authorities to come up with their local bylaws. Ah. And the local authorities should see a window in this, yes. an opportunity, yes. because it will really assist them to really turn around um, the, 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 the fortunes of that particular local authority. So on our policies, we are doing well. Mm -hmm. We are doing well. Okay, we are going into COPE. 28 mm -hmm. circular economy mm -hmm. is a critical mm -hmm. aspect the climate change conference yeah. tell us a bit about how because people know zimbabwe participates yeah. but people don't really then see the tangible mm -hmm. instantly mm -hmm. right S just link zimbabwe to the whole cop 28 mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm and then put it out there to people to say, these are the benefits that are coming out when we go and discuss mm -hmm. what really comes out of these mega conferences. Right, um, I think mostly from our end, uh, we've been trying to garner for the climate financing. Yeah. Yeah, especially looking at the damage that is coming from the, um, the impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, but not really trying to run away from my purview or my mandate and since we are talking about waste, waste management, I want uh, people to understand that in as much as we talk about climate change, climate change mitigation, adaptation, yeah. and all that, and all the the, uh, the semantics that we use, we need to understand that the waste that we are talking about contributes so much to climate change. Mm. Because for starters, um, the poor uh, disposal of waste, the accumulation of waste in the environment, um, can actually um, lead to the emission of okay. methane, yeah, yeah, especially the anaerobic uh, decay of uh, waste matter, they, we end up having methane. And if we look at methane, it's a greenhouse gas, mm -hmm. and if we compare with all other greenhouse gases, yeah, yeah. it's, it's strong. actually strong. Yeah. yeah, it's quite, it's potent. It absorbs heat faster. It's, it has got a short resident period in the environment, but within that short resident the period damage. in the environment, some say 12 years. But I tell you, it really uh, absorbs so much heat and it warms up the atmosphere great global warming and climate change mm -hmm. so the main thing we can eradicate it by uh, adopting the best practices in waste management let's talk about uh, the carbon, carbon um, monoxide that is um, actually emitted when we burn mm -hmm. especially in, in, in combustion mm -hmm. we know it's not a greenhouse gas but uh, through other reactions we end up having carbon dioxide which yeah. is a greenhouse gas mm. and uh, this one has got a longer uh, wow. resident period wow. in the environment and it takes years you know with us so these are some of the things that we have to look uh, at um with in as much as we talk about climate change mm. let's start from home wow. and see what best can we do you know, without asking for much. A lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Because it's not only, you know, the carbon monoxide and what if you also have particulate matter. Mm -hmm. Particulate matter when it is in the atmosphere, it attracts it. And then it will just warm up the atmosphere as wow. well. So people need to understand the basics of climate change. Mm -hmm. Even as much as we then go into the larger forums trying to garner for climate financing, yeah. let's also be doing a bit in trying I mean, in mm. our small ways to reduce the other, um, um, or rather, can you say, drivers of climate change mm. in our local environments. Wow, that's why I love the show. You learn a lot. Yeah. The simplest things have greater impact. Yeah. And as I've said in the second segment there, mm. that the environment will never forget those who have violated it. It will come back yeah. to haunt you. Mm. And then now let's talk about uh, plastic removal of plastic. The minister uh, stated that there is a plan mm -hmm. by government. Mm -hmm. who it's already been in progress in sync with mm -hmm. the uh, Minister of Industry, Minister mm -hmm. of Environment. They're working together to ensure that plastic packaging will be removed in yeah. 2024. How is that going? Uh, I think we have already started well because already we are sitting on an SI mm -hmm. that talks about the banning of thin plastics uh, with um, those, all those that have got a thickness of less than uh, 30 microns. 
it has been banned in Zimbabwe. I think that's a status. Zimbabwe, we can place ourselves among the League of Nations that are talking about reducing plastic mm -hmm. pollution because already we are doing that. But other than that, you realize that um, we are part of um, we are part of the countries that set in the UNIA, um, the last UNIA fifth session in 2022, mm -hmm. right? Whereby we also committed to work hard to, to, to I mean to work hard towards reducing plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. And already we are making all those uh, necessary or rather the necessary engagement, talking to the manufacturers, talking to the retailers, talking to the communities themselves. Because we are saying um, if we as Zimbabwe probably will target removal of care, plastic thin plastic carrier bags, mm -hmm. we can all do that. Uh, just um, think of how many times you've been asked by a a, a, a till operator, can I add plastic? Yeah. Just refuse that plastic. Mm. Refuse that plastic and serve the air. Mm. And what you can only do, I remember when we were bringing up mothers at baskets, yes. that we always pick yes. every time you're going to the shops. So why can't we do that? Mm. Let's just do, do that and also let's go for other carrier bags that are more durable, the eco well. bags and whatever. Mm. We have got a number that are already there in circulation, though we still have a problem of saying some of them they are not up, they cannot be afforded by the general public mm -hmm. but we're trying to to align everything such that it's affordable and can only all adopt the alternatives to plastics wow well this comes uh, this gives me the pleasure to say thank you so much for hosting us here at the emma uh, offices in harare mm -hmm. And viewers, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've learned a lot, just like I've been learning that the environment will not forget those who have uh, hurt it. Mm -hmm. And indeed, it starts with those small things at home. Separate the waste, have your green and brown bag. Don't put your solids with the decomposables. No, no, no. Separate those things. And always remember, Kupisa Marara, Sandi Guguna, you're actually damaging the environment and you're contributing immensely to climate change. This has been Beyond Tomorrow.